All right, so we're here with Points Cassius Robertson, Missouri guard. Cassius Robertson. Currently in the process, stepping into his professional career. So, so Cash, give us like um, a quick debriefing of your story. Not, not from the very well. Yeah, let's let's kind of let's go into it from the beginning. Like, you started hooping. You started hooping late, no? Yeah, I think uh, my first organized team was um, was eighth grade summer. Um, played on this little MDP team. Fourth reason, yeah, something like that. So, um, yeah, that was my first organized team. You know, I ended up making a team as a reserve, um, and then ever since then, uh, I met uh, you know some of my childhood friends. You know, Dapple Badmos. You guys heard of him? Met him, and then and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, we ended up like making some tournament to go to Ottawa. Uh, and it was kind of like against other regions in, in the province, and we ended up winning the whole thing. Um, uh, and you know, I was I was probably one of the worst players on the team, got probably the least playing time. But like, it was it was a real good experience for me in terms of you know trying to uh, make it in the basketball game. I realized that you know it, it was definitely something I wanted to do seriously. That was eighth grade summer, so grade nine. Yeah. I went to Thornley. Yeah. Grade nine and ten. What was it like there for you, like basketball wise? It was um it was. It was an experience. I mean, basketball was tough. It was definitely the first team I was ever on where it was like um, the coaches were extremely strict. You know, we were waking up early mornings. It was definitely, um, definitely a real serious environment in terms of the coaches. You know, I definitely realized that, you know, you know, I could possibly do something with this basketball thing. And, um, you know, I seen um, a lot of the guys that uh, were playing under these coaches and with these coaches, not just at Thornley, but like in the programs that they, they helped out with yeah. outside of school. You know, they were doing things with basketball in terms of like college and, and stuff like that. So that's something I definitely uh, seen that I want to do and I expressed that I want to do to, to Coach Corey and Coach Anson and they, uh, you know, kind of took me under their wing. After that, um, after I finished Thornley, I ended up going to transfer into Bond Secondary School. Mm -hmm. uh, went to play with Andrew Wiggins. Um, Henry Tan, Troy Reed Knight, um, Cy Samuels um, was probably the best high school in the country um, in terms of basketball. So I wanted to go play with better players, you know, try to up my game a little bit. Um, I was grade 11, sat the bench a lot. Practice got a lot better, but um, sat the bench a lot my first year. Second year, started playing a lot more. Andrew left, went to prep. Um, we won. Uh, officers two years in a row um, you know that was a crazy experience um, and I kind of just got better a little bit um, every year um, but I still haven't I still never got to that role where I was actually playing a lot you know what I'm saying so yeah where I was a guy I was never really that in that position I didn't really get a lot of minutes um, and I think you grow the most when you, when you get minutes on the court so so you graduate Vaughn then you yeah. back to Thornley for your fifth year and my AAU coach, Shane James, ended up taking over the coaching position at Thornley. So that's the main reason why I went. Yeah, just um, yeah you know, just was going to be kind of, you know, the guy on the team, um, along with, uh, you know, some good uh, other good players, too. Um, yeah, that was a really good year. Um, it was nice to be back in my, my home school, and it was, like, a really good development year for me um, in terms of, like, <coughs> kind of being the man and, and, and getting better on the court with, with on the court experience. Yeah. So touch on your uh, your recruitment process. I was working out with Kyle Julius. He's running a thing called A-game training. Um, so I was training with him all summer, um, the summer before grade 12 and the, and the summer after. And um, he knew this guy named Mike Menega, um, who was uh, an assistant coach at Canisius College. I guess Canisius was kind of looking for players, obviously, and um, Kyle Julius, uh, you know, I asked Kyle, I was like, you know, I'm trying to, you know, get somewhere, I'm trying to go to school somewhere. So I, I had taken a visit to Guelph initially, actually. I was going, I was going to commit there. Um, but uh, Kyle... Uh, reached out to the Canisius College to, to the Canisius College assistant Mike Menega and said, you know, I got a kid. He works hard. Um, could be pretty good. Um, you know, you guys should check him out. So another assistant, Pat Clark from Canisius, ended up coming down, watching me work out. Um, did a little workout. 
uh, you know, some shooting, some ball handling, all that stuff, and they watched, and, and uh, I think um, a week later, they ended up uh, telling me to come down to Buffalo um, to join their little workout, so I went down to Buffalo, had a workout with them, we played scrimmage with the actual team, um, five on five, I did pretty well, you know, hit a couple shots, made a couple good passes, and uh, you know, the next night, I went home that night, um, and the next day, head coach Jim Barron called me. He's like, you know, he'd like to offer you a scholarship. So I said, hell yeah. Um, so I, I verbally committed right there. Um, that was my only offer. So And it was getting late um, in terms of making your decision. So I, I just made my decision right there. I ended up going to summer school, I think, a week after that. Um, so, yeah, that was, uh, that was that. My first year... The team, the Canisius team was really good, really good. We had a couple guys, two guys on our team played summer league that year. So I knew like Billy was kind of at my position and there was another freshman that came in that was also at my position that, you know, was kind of like a real high recruit. So I knew I wasn't gonna play that much. Um, I could tell in the exhibition game, I played like five minutes. Um, so, you know, I talked to Coach Meniga, who's the assistant, who was like my original guy because he recruited me. You know, we talked about the redshirt option and, you know, we both decided that it would be good for me uh, to get a redshirt year in and kind of, um, you know, just to work on my game. And, and it ended up, you know, being really, really good for me because, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time in the gym that year. I got a little better, got a little bigger um, and just learned a lot from guys like Billy. Um, you know, the next year after that, um, it was kind of, you know, kind of handed me. I didn't get the keys, but like I got, you know, my chance for sure. Um, so my freshman season, first half of the season, I averaged like one point something points. Um, didn't play much, was struggling, couldn't really shoot it. Um, more of a defensive guy, um, got some layups in, tr good transition guy. And then second half of the season, um, kind of started getting more aggressive. Um, ended up averaging at the end of the season like seven points a game um, shot like 35 percent from three ended up making all rookie team and uh it kind of took off from there then, uh, your freshman year was that when you hit the game winner against um or something? yeah or yeah year? no that freshman? was that was freshman year yeah so you went from a guy in your freshman year first semester averaging one point to a guy in the second semester with the ball in your hands at the last shot to take yeah. the last shot in the game. That was crazy. And you end up eventually just doing three years at Canisius mm -hmm. with like, talk about your accolades that you left Canisius with. Um, I mean, there wasn't much to be honest. I, I made, um, I didn't make no um, all tournament teams my sophomore year. Um, I averaged like maybe 14 points. We weren't a real good team. Finished like fifth or sixth in the league. Um, then my junior year, we came in. Um, ended up averaging like 16 points on the dot a game. Um, at one point, I was the leading scorer in the conference. Um, slipped a little bit at the end, and our team didn't do very well. You ended up leaving Canisius as junior. Junior, second team on Mac. Yeah. Thousand point scorer. Yeah. So during that season, um, you know, my old AU coach was was telling me, um, you know, there's a lot of people in my ear saying like, you know, you know, you, uh, you should, uh, you know, consider going higher level. Um, you should think about it. You know, we'll talk more about it after the season. So I, you know, I didn't really pay attention to it until after the season. I, I remember they had a tournament, NCAA tournament game in, in Buffalo, Virginia Tech played, um, Villanova actually. So we went to go watch that. And, you know, we, we kind of sat down and we said, you know, you can play at this level. And, and it was something I always wanted to do, you know, play at the bigger level. and. Um, obviously, playing the NBA, of course. So it was uh, apparent that like NBA scouts and and teams and GMs, they wanted to see you play against NBA got NBA competition. Um, I ended up deciding to uh, open up my options as a grad transfer. The calls came flooding in. Um, it was between my fa my final three were uh, Georgia Tech, Missouri, and Oregon. Um, and I ended up visiting, just visiting Missouri and Georgia Tech, and ended up choosing Missouri. 
I was going to play with the number one recruit. They signed. We had the fourth best draft cl- or uh, signee class, freshman class coming in, in the country. Um, so I was going to play with you know Mike Porter. There's a lot of attention, a lot of NBA attention, scouts, TV time. Um, every single one of our games was on ESPN or CBS. Um, the year before I got there, they only won eight games. Um, so they fired their whole coaching staff. So it was a new coaching staff coming in. Conzo Martin came from Cal, got the job at Missouri. Um, he's the one who, who recruited me, him and Cornell Mann. And uh, yeah, they brought me in kind of to be a guy who doesn't take too many shots, but he's, you know, he's efficient and um, just, you know, kind of leads the team and guides the team because there's a lot of young guys coming in. So they needed a, a older type of guy to kind of guide them. First game of the season rolls around. We play Iowa State. I was slated it up, um, to be kind of just a catch and shoot guy, kind of just a role player. Um, and then I got a text from Coach Martin, my head coach, um, the night before the game. And he was like, I'm starting your point guard tomorrow. So I was like, geez, okay. Um, so we were using warm ups. And then, you know, we're all warming up, we're all hyped, we're about to packed house. First time the Mizzou Arena has been sold out, I think it was like four or five years. Um, full 16,000 in there. So we were warming up. Iowa State, Mike goes up for a dunk and gets hitched. So long story short, ended up he ended up rupturing a disc in his back in the warm-ups. Ended up being out for the season. So that was a huge blow to our team. But in that, you know, kind of loss, I kind of found myself as a player. Um, Open the doors for you. Open the much. doors for me, yeah. Ended up uh, averaging about 16 and a half points a game. Shot 43% from three. Um, all my numbers were at all time highs. Um, led the team to the tournament. We made the tournament, lost the first round, but um, ended up making first team all SEC. One player of the week, two weeks in a row. Um, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was crazy. It was crazy, crazy year. But um, definitely a huge, uh, huge thing for my game and, and my confidence and just an open doors for me, for sure. Um, five years, I definitely see myself in the NBA. Well, I can't predict the future, of course. Nobody can, but there's been so much stuff I learned about this whole kind of, um, this whole process, this whole pro thing. And, and unfortunately, you do have to treat it as a job now that, um, that you're a pro player because as much as people say you know it's not about the money it's not all about the money but at the end of the day you do got to provide for your family you got to put food on the table so um unfortunately you know you got to go where the money's at 